One of the most difficult things in sim racing is how to get in sim racing. There are so many choices of games as well as equipment to choose. It becomes even more difficult when the budget is so short you are not sure what to get and when to get it. It's not that sim racing is expensive, but don't get me wrong here, it can become a money sink faster than Pastor Maldonado can crash. But you really don't need to make it a money pit to enjoy this little hobby of ours where we pretend to be faster than we really are. Well, sometimes it's not so little. This will be a two-part series for those who want to get into sim racing and are on a shorter budget. I'll be trying to help you guys with some ideas, tips and choices to maximize your bank to the buck so you can be turning virtual laps in no time. If you'd like that, please don't forget to leave a like and a sub as that helps the channel immensely. Firstly, let's establish a small, very typical budget. We're talking about 100 to 150 dollars, euros or pounds, which seems to be something that happens a lot. You can give or take a tenner. Also, I'll be assuming you already own a platform that can run all sim racing titles for that specific platform. Otherwise, this little exercise of ours doesn't make any sense because 100 to 150 smackaroos is quite short on its own, let alone if you want to buy a platform as well. So, to start, what do you really need for sim racing? Well, mostly a wheel, mostly as you can race with a gamepad, even on the PC, but we will be aiming to get a wheel for this video, and a decent title that you can use with an active online community or with the community at large. The first part of this formula, which is the central part of today's video, is the wheel, which will take most of our budget. There are a few options, all of them need to be used if we are not to bust the budget. Regarding the wheel, one thing you really want in all of this is absolutely force feedback. And you also should get at least 900 degrees of rotation. So the choices are the Logitech Driving Force GT, the G25, the G27, as well as a G29 or a G920 with some luck. From Trustmaster, look only at the T150 or TMX and above if you can get them, otherwise you'll be wasting your money in something like a T80. Consider your system as well. Some of these wheels will not be compatible with the newer generation of consoles, but it will be of course on the PC. Keep that in mind, otherwise you might end up spending your time and money buying something you can't use. When you are looking for any wheel, make sure you understand its conditions, if there are any extras in a bundle, as sometimes it's preferable to spend just a little more to get something useful like a stand, make sure that the wheel has all accessories it came with, and as you are very likely being using this wheel in a desk, make sure that the table clamp is included, otherwise you'll need to drill some holes to hard mount the wheel and that might not be desirable. It's absolutely imperative to look everywhere, you need to look online in online stores, Amazon, you need to check the second hand market daily, that means eBay, Gumtree, Facebook, Spock and so forth. And in order to make sure you get a good deal, you need to be proactive and even ask people to drop their prices. Sometimes they'll agree, but don't be too aggressive here, otherwise the seller might ignore you altogether. So let's start with the wheel selection. The first one that I mentioned is the Driving Force GT, which is more or less a complete package. It's an older wheel, it's mainly the granddad of all Logitech wheels that are worth your time. It is a competent one, but it will feel like it's a really old wheel, because in, in reality it really is. All of them will be very likely to have crazy hours on them, so keep this in mind when you buy them or you're looking at them. The wheel is really quite decent, it has a set of flappy pedals, it has a great selection of buttons, including a rotor and a couple of extra buttons that normally you don't see anywhere, and also comes with a sequential shifter. While the wheel is good, the pedal set is not so much. If you want to have a look at a very decent in-depth review of it, look no further than this channel and check the card above. The price of the Driving Force GT will over around somewhere from 30 to 70 of pounds, dollars or euros depending on condition and depending on time of year. But while I know this is an older piece of kit, many to this day continue to use this wheel for good reasons. In terms of compatibility, they are compatible with the PC and PlayStation 3, but no PlayStation 4 or Xbox. 
Going slightly up the market, we have the G25 and its older brother, the G27. They also have an outstanding reputation. Normally, they will come with a gear shifter as well, so this is really a complete package. The pedals are a substantial upgrade over the Driving Force GT. They are better built, they have better feel, they have a better brake pedal, which is so important, and it also comes with a clutch. I've had a G25 and it was bulletproof and really nice to drive. I like the feeling of the steering wheel even though it didn't have a lot of buttons. The four seat back was a bit clunky but it was communicative. They are a bit limited on button selection like I mentioned but they are not too bad. Price wise you may find these hovering around 80 to 120 pounds US dollars or euros and they are compatible with the PC and PlayStation 3 but no PlayStation 4 or Xbox. For the next set of rudders, the G29 and the G920, they might require a bit of a bargain hunt but in my opinion they are totally worthwhile. These two are really great pieces of kit, a decent evolution over the Driving Force GT, G25 and G27 of old. They have really good force feedback for what they are and they have an excellent pedal set for the price, something that I was really impressed about. Out of the box they come with an excellent button selection and you may find it that it can be used in many circumstances. Unfortunately it does not come in a shifter, normally you would have to buy them separately but you might find a good deal. If you want to see a really good review on it, probably the best on YouTube I might add, check the card above. When launched they were new, roughly around 300 pounds, but now sometimes there are sales dropping the price to around 120. However, unfortunately, these are not really the norm, so you most likely will have to have a look again there around at the used market where the prices are around 100 to 160. With a bit of effort and some haggling, the prices can be dropped a bit further. As compatibility goes, both of them are compatible with the PC, but if you want to use them in a console, the G29 is the PlayStation wheel and the G920 is the Xbox One wheel. On the Thrustmaster side of things, there aren't really many choices. The TMX T150 brothers are almost twin siblings. The main difference besides compatibility is that the T150 rotates to 1080 degrees while the TMX to 900. Other than that, they are pretty much the same thing. The four seat back is really great on these as they are belt driven as opposite to the Logitech's gear driven systems. So they have a smooth four seat back for the price. They have precise inputs and an overall good quality construction. The downside are the pedals and if you're not able to find a model with the AAA pedal set, you might suffer a bit with the stock ones. Now for the second hand price of these, they are around 130 to 180 pounds dollars or euros. But with a bit of patience and browsing at different places, different people and some haggling, some good deals can be found. As for compatibility, the T150 is the PlayStation 4 compatible one, while the TMX is the Xbox compatible wheel. Believe it or not, while having a better wheel generally is good, once you get used to what you have, it won't really make a big difference. You just need to have like a, a good solid wheel even the independent of the price, something that has force feedback. You can be competitive with any of these wheels that I've recommended and many budget sim racers all around the world were and still are insanely fast with them. In terms of upgrade paths, unfortunately for these wheels you won't have much, but for the PC you can always swap the pedal set for something that is USB pluggable, something like a Fanatec CSL Elite or Elite Load Cell, and then you can have like a good pedal set with your wheel. The most important thing of all of this is to find a good deal, make sure that everything is in condition, otherwise you're just spending your time and money in something that you can't use. Maybe in the future I'll do an episode regarding upgrades and what upgrade paths should you take for sim racing. But anyways guys, I'll leave this episode here, the next one will be targeting what sims should you consider if you want to start sim racing. Let me know what you thought about this video and this video project and what type of similar content you'd be liking to see in the channel. If you want to see more of this content, make sure you press like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll see notifications when new videos and streams come out. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.